mixing with mic mixing tip, widening a stereo reverb. Uh, in this uh, video, we're going to take a look at um, uh, some ways to kind of work with widening a stereo reverb. And I'm, I'm going to kind of work here with just something simple. We're going to start uh, by working with some drums and just a simple stereo drum reverb. So what I'm going to do here is I'm, I'm going to uh, just play. So what we have here is um, an H reverb plugin. Here, I'll just kind of, so I can kind of mess with it a little bit here. Just making a minor adjustment here. can actually uh, uh, zoom in on this, that might help. All right, so just to kind of tweak in the settings a little bit here. Now, um, so this is just like a basic room sound using the H reverb. Now, under normal circumstances, um, if you think about um, what happens with an instrument when it's in an acoustic space, and say so you had a drum uh, that was in a room that's more or less the size of what we're kind of emulating here, the space would actually envelop you more if you were in that room. So if you were, say, uh, you were, say, like, um, you know, 20 feet away um, from the front of the drum kit, the drum kit would actually be very mono in, uh, um, like, a bigger size space, and you would get reverb coming from all around you. And so you would be enveloped in the room. And actually, uh, interestingly, the sound source would be very monural because you would be so far away because the elements would be so close together. You wouldn't get as much of the left rightness of the kit unless you moved up close. Now, when we mix in speakers, it's very common uh, for drums and working with individual instruments to sort of spread them wide and kind of use the full stereo spectrum of the speakers. And one of the problems with that is that the reverb is also contained within those same speakers. So I want to show you some methods that you can use to sort of take and sort of extend the reverb outside of the speakers a little bit so you get a little bit more of the sense of depth and size. One of the obvious ways of, of doing this is to take and um, get some an, a stereo imager plugin. Um, this is a S1 by Waves, which is really simple, very easy to use, and works perfectly for something like this. You can also use an MS uh, plugin. So with an MS plugin where you have separate gain controls for the mid and the side signal, you can actually pull down some of the mid signal and push up some of the side signal. And a very similar thing is achieved by using the S1 here. And what that does is it takes some of the reverb out of the center and moves it wider to the outside using sort of a phase decorrelation. And uh, what that does is it will extend the sound of the reverb outside of the speakers. So let's just have a listen to what this does in and out. So what this what this is basically doing is it's spreading it a little bit wider and you're getting a little bit more, you know, if you're listening in speakers, you'll hear the reverb sort of extend out a little bit wider. And I could probably exaggerate this a little bit if I take the existing room out. So that's normal. So, and I think you can hear that a little bit more clearly. So the existing acoustic room that's in there is sort of, you know, uh, pulling things in a little bit, and this will help kind of with the odd, with the examples. Now, this is one way of going about this. Another way of of kind of working with this is actually taking this, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to split this track into mono here. And uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to assign an input, which should be bus 15 and 16, oddly labeled uh, guitar delay. I just have to go to my I.O. settings and make an adjustment on that. But um, uh, what I have is uh, the same exact feeds 
here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to call up uh, this uh, same reverb plugin. So I'll kind of swing in here somewhere to the H reverb mono. Uh, and what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to start by copying and pasting these settings. So I'm going to copy the settings from here. Uh, I'm going to open this up and I'm going to paste it right into here. Uh, even opens up the collapse window. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to copy it over to the side. So I'm going to mute this for a second. So now what we have are the identical settings, except in this particular case, now what we have are two mono reverbs that are, are now uh, side by side. And what this does is it gives us the ability to sort of decorrelate them. So if we were now using this, the reverb on its own would be somewhat mono like. And so what I really want to do here is kind of take and work with this uh, in this particular setting. So I'm going to take it out of the sync mode. Now what we have here is a sync delay of about nine milliseconds. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a slight shift of this on the pre-delay from one side to the other. So just a millisecond. So this is kind of a short thing, nothing major here. Um, and uh, what I'm also going to do is I'm going to increase the reverb time just slightly on one side and then uh, just back on the other. So what I'm going to do is this is just like creating some subtle differences between the two sides. I could also even uh, change up the early reflections as they appear from one side to the other. So I may work with a, um, a different setting here on one side versus the other. So behind something that's sort of a similar shape here, then maybe we can... start to create some variation and some differences. So now um, on the other side of things here, I can actually also work um, with the, well, actually what I'll do is I'll start by working um, here a little bit um, with the reverb. So maybe I'll just do like a slight dampening on the low end and a little more high end on this side. Uh, so I think I'm gonna wanna overall bring up a little bit more high frequency, not too much here. Um, and and then just maybe just like a slightest amount of boost here. So the idea here is I'm creating a little bit of variation or difference with this particular plugin. I can also swing in a little bit of amplitude modulation to just kind of create a little bit of variation between the two sides. And now I'm starting to create a little bit of variation or distance between the two sides, or difference, excuse me. So now I can also take this, so on this side, uh, let's just see, I put a little bit more high end on this side. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna roll it off a little bit with the EQ here. And then on this side, I'm gonna put a little bit more. So where I'm taking it away overall, I'm actually uh, making up for it by rolling off less on the equalization stage uh, of things. And if we think about this, this has a little bit more low end. So what I'll do on this end is maybe I'll dip it a little bit here, put a little bit back on this side. Uh, so what we're doing is, um, or what I'm doing here, uh, is I'm kind of trying to create a little bit of a, um, uh, a little bit of a, uh, you know, frequency kind of variation here, just creating some subtle. So if I'm going to boost a little bit on one side, I'm going to dip a little bit on the other. And, uh, wow, this guy's way over here. All right, so let me do similar type of thing on, on this side. So by doing this, what I'm doing is this, this process is kind of called like a decorrelation. And while it's a mono, you know, like um, more or less it's a manual thing. In other words, uh, this is not kind of doing this. And stereo reverbs will have a natural kind of uh, difference between them on the left and right side, it's sort of part of the uh, design of the reverb. Um, what I found is that with a lot of digital reverbs, you don't get the full separation of left and right that make them completely independent or give you that full control. Some plugins like the um, Lexicon uh, reverb plugins, which are very good, actually have a width control. And you see like width controls, which is sort of very similar to what I did there or a decorrelation control, where it actually gives you some variation in terms of the reflections or timings or, or things along those lines um, from one side to the other. And um, and I can also, just from, just from uh, you know, having fun kind of point here, I can also uh, do a little variation uh, here with um, uh, the size, which will also change some of the early reflection uh, variations.
So now we're getting a little bit more variation between the two sides. So just to give you a point of reference here when, when we're uh, listening to this, and this can kind of work with anything, particularly things where you're panning in. Uh, one quick thing to note here um, uh, as part of this, I'll just kind of pull this aside. When I'm using the sends, I'm feeding the sends in uh, to this uh, 15 and 16. What I'm really doing here is I would be feeding them in um, fader uh, follow main pan. So uh, whatever the main pan positions are, uh, those are signals are feeding in identically into the reverb. So I just wanted to kind of point that out. So just to kind of show you here um, uh, what this is and how this works, I can actually just hear if I solo up this particular track, snare, the reverb is only on the left or only on the right. Whereas now if I, uh, if I do this uh, from this side, It's more to the right, but not entirely. And that's actually, in, in, you know, and that's obviously more natural. This actually, this reverb is, is actually very good for that. Uh, some of them are not quite as good. And depending upon the, the uh, program that you set up, it will be more or less that way. But what I want to do here is I'm going to create a quick group. And it's going to call this uh, my, uh, let me kind of my, um, oh, I'm going to get caught up in names here, drum verb, make it simple. And then, uh, so now I can kind of work uh, these guys. So now let's uh, take these guys out of solo. And now let's hear the difference of the variation between normal stereo. And then split stereo. normal stereo, split stereo. So I think you can hear that that difference in there. There's actually like uh, it could probably I'm getting a little bit of an echoey uh, kind of thing here. So probably in the source reverb, I probably should have tweaked it in a little bit more. But what I can do here is I can back off a little bit on the early reflections. You can hear all those delays can become more apparent in the in the split stereo version versus the regular stereo version. And this is actually with the stereo imager in. So if I take the stereo imager out, that's probably part of the uh, situation here. much more mono. So I think you can you can get the sense or the idea of um, of what's going on here where you can really have much more control. And it still sounds like it's the same space. I could probably tweak it in a little bit tighter uh, and work with that. Um, but the the more variation that you get, the wider imaging you get, and the bigger spread that you get. So let's listen to that and and how that varies in the context of some of the other instruments being blended in, uh, and uh, then we'll wrap up this tip. So I'll mix it back a little bit more here in context. regular one. I 
I think you can get the get the sense from this how um, with the uh, dual mono version how you get like that extra width and uh, that may not be like perfectly appropriate for this more of an R and B kind of track but you could get the sense of how this uh, can be a valuable way uh, where you're in a situation where you really want to spread or open up a space working with the dual mono configuration instead of working with just like a standard stereo. All right, this uh, mixing with mic uh, mixing tip, which is uh, widening uh, stereo reverb.